Welcome to the ABPDU's video SOP for the UHPLC Ultimate 3000. Today we will describe the standard operating procedures related to our HPLC system. HPLC, or High Performance Liquid Chromatography, is an analytical technique used to separate and identify compounds found in any sample. First, let's review some safety considerations for the HPLC system. There are two main safety factors to consider when working with the HPLC system. The first is that eluents often contain acids, such as sulfuric acid and formic acid. Be sure to have a waste container to collect all waste and dispose of your waste properly. Second, HPLC columns operate at high pressures. Be sure the proper pressure limitations are set in chromeleon so that a column does not exceed its maximum pressure. Also, Always remember to wear proper PPE when working with the HPLC system. To start, we must describe the system overall. Atop the HPLC system sits the eluent, or mobile phase. Next is the pump system. The pump system drives eluent throughout compartments of the HPLC, from the eluent bottle, through the degasser, the pump itself, then to the auto sampler, to the column, and finally to the detectors. Below the pump system is the column oven where usually sits the column. Next we have the auto sampler. This system uses a needle to draw samples from the HPLC vials and the mobile phase carries the sample towards the column where the separation of analytes takes place. Finally is the detector. The detector can be RI UV Viz or CAD depending on your application. Eluent preparation should be done using deionized water and analytical grade reagents in cleaned analytical glassware. In most cases, prepared eluents should be degassed using a sonicator. Here we will show how we do the degassing. First, the eluent bottle is connected to a sterile vacuum bottle filter Once the filter is connected, the tubing is connected to the vacuum source. Turn on the vacuum and sonicator and allow the mobile phase to be degassed for approximately 30 minutes. Once this process is complete, the mobile phase is ready for use and can be placed atop the HPLC instrument. Be sure you are using the correct analytical column for your application. Each column has different, unique operating parameters and applications. If the column to be used has not been running for a long time or is new, it should be equilibrated first, usually through an overnight equilibration. Be sure the proper eluent is moving through the column. The operating pressure should stay below the pressure suggested within the product manual. Any time when the pressure is higher than normal during equilibration, consult the analytical team or column vendor for solutions. Guard columns are protective cartridges installed before the analytical columns. They serve to remove the impurities and suspended solids from reaching the analytical columns. Before we start the operation, we must first check that all units are in working order. First, check that the correct column is installed to run the analysis. Do not use a column outside of the pH range identified by the manufacturer. Confirm the column is compatible with the mobile phase being used for new columns, pump at least 5 to 10 column volumes of mobile phase before connecting the column to the detector. Use a dedicated column for each application to ensure it is not contaminated with non-volatile salts or eluents. Check that there is a sufficient amount of eluent to run all samples. If the eluent has been changed, be sure to purge the system for 3 to 5 minutes. 
The procedure to purge the system will be highlighted in the pump section of this video. Ensure waste mobile levels are below three-fourths of the waste container so that they will not overflow. Chromelion 7 software is the program which remotely controls the HPLC and analyzes the data created. The software consists of two main sections, the console and the studio. When you first start the program, you will bring up the console. The console is the place where you can monitor and manually control the HPLC system and do some sequence editing. This is the entry point of Chromelion and it's broken into three sections, instruments, data, and e-workflow. We will mainly cover instruments and data in this video SOP. In the instruments section, select Ultimate 3000 HPLC. Across the top bar, you will see the options Home, Pump Module, Sampler, Column Oven, UV, RI, CAD, Audit, Startup, and Q. Under Pump Module, you should see that the module is green and says Connected. If the pump module is not connected, ensure the pump system is turned on and select Module Connect in the Pump Module tab. After connecting, you will have the options to edit the pump flow rate and set pressure limits. In Standby mode, the pump should be set to 0 0.05 or 0 0.1 milliliters per minute in order to maintain constant flow through the column while saving the eluent. As previously stated, one should purge the pump when replacing eluents. In the Pump tab, select More Options. Open the door to the pump compartment and turn the valve labeled Purge to derive the eluent flow away from the column. Once the purge valve is open, select purge within the more options operating box. Once the purge is complete, remember to close the purge valve. The auto sampler holds the HPLC sample vials for analysis. It is divided into three sections labeled by color, blue, green, and red. In the Auto Sampler tab, ensure that the sampler is connected. If it is not, check that the sampler is turned on and then select Module Connect to connect the sampler to the system. In the Sampler tab, it is critical to check the 40 well or 96 well option depending on the type of tray you plan to use in each section. Next is the Column tab. Ensure that the column is connected. If it is not, check that the column system is turned on externally and then select Module Connect to connect the column to the system. In standby mode, the column oven should be set to off. For the detectors, UV, RI, and CAD, make sure the detector you are planning to use is on and connected to the system using the Module Connect option. RI detection is the most frequently used detector in our daily work. In the RI tab, the desired temperature should be set prior to doing the analysis. It is recommended that the RID temperature is set to be 5 degrees Celsius lower than the column oven temperature. Note that it may take 30 minutes to 3 hours for the RID to get stabilized after the temperature change. If UV detection will be used in the analysis, be sure to turn on the lamp by selecting UV lamp under commands. This allows the UV lamp to heat up and get ready for the analysis. To create a sequence, begin by navigating to the Create tab and selecting Sequence. The new Sequence Wizard will appear and you will be prompted to select the instrument. Select UHPLC Ultimate 3000 and hit Next. Now you can build your sequence to reflect the number and type of samples which will be run. If you are using a known instrument or data processing method, 
you can browse and load these as well. Once you have created your sequence, be sure to save it to the proper folder and consistently save it as you make changes and add injections. If you do not have a known instrument method, you will have to create one. You can do this by navigating to the Create tab and selecting Instrument Method. First, you will be prompted to enter the runtime of the method. This will change depending on your samples. In the stage of method development, it is safest to start with a longer runtime and change it to be shorter after you are certain that all components of your sample are present in the chromatogram. You must also select which detectors are to be used. Select Next and you will be prompted to specify the general settings for the pump. It is good practice to accurately label the solvents and the lines to which they are connected. Set your pressure limits to a safe range which will protect the column. Keep the max acceleration and deceleration of the pump near 0.1 milliliters per minute squared. Select Next, and you will be prompted to enter the flow gradient for the pump. Flow gradient is a way to flow more than one eluent through the column at the same time. For example, you may want to flow a mixture of DI water and acetonitrile at the same time through the column. By editing the flow percentages in the flow gradient table, you can specify exactly how much and at what time your flow gradient will change. Select Next and you will be brought to the Sampler Settings page. You can leave this window as is unless you have any reason to change any of the parameters. Select Next and you will be brought to the Injection Mode for the sampler. Again, you can leave this window as is unless you have a reason to change any of the parameters. Select Next and you will be brought to the Column Oven Settings. Select Use Temperature Control and set the Temperature, Lower Limits, and Upper Limit. Select Next and you will be brought to the Column Settings. You can usually leave this window as is unless you have a reason to change any of the parameters. Select Next and you will be brought to the UV Channels window. If using UV detection, select and edit the wavelength channels you want to acquire data from. Otherwise, deselect the wavelength channels. Select Next and you will be brought to the UV timetable. If you are not going to use the UV detector, please deselect it. Otherwise, you can leave this window as is unless you have a reason to change any of the parameters. Select Next and you will be brought to the RI settings. If using RI detection, make sure that Detector Active is selected. Acquisition on and off reflect the correct sample runtime and that the temperature of the RI is set at 5 degrees Celsius less than the column oven temperature, or 55 degrees Celsius as that is the highest temperature the RID can reach. Select Next and you will be brought to the CAD settings. You can leave this window as is unless you have any reason to change any of the parameters. Finally, you will need to add a comment and description to your instrument method and select Finish. This method will open in the Chromatography Studio. Review the method and make appropriate changes. Remember to save the method by selecting Save and entering the name of the instrument method.
If you do not have a known processing method, you will have to create one. You can do this by navigating to the Create tab and selecting Processing Method. Select one of the processing method layout templates, such as Quantitative or Basic Quantitative, and select Next. Name your method and select where it will be saved and to which injections this method will be applied. Click Finish. If you are working with unknown samples, dilute the sample to make the estimated max concentration below 20 grams per liter. Remember to always vortex and filter the sample using a 0.2 micrometer filter before analysis. Ensure all samples are labeled properly and transfer them to the HPLC system. For calibration standards, prepare the first standard using 80 gram per liter stock from the analytical freezer. Prepare at least five calibration standards using serial dilution to allow the range to cover the estimated concentration of unknown samples. QC standards are used as absolute standards for cross-checking all carbohydrates, alcohols, and organic acids. Their concentration is one gram per liter. Now you have verified the instrument is set up correctly, equilibrated your column, created a sequence, created an instrument method, and prepped your unknown samples, calibration standards, and QC standards. Launch your newly created sequence and modify all sample names and locations to reflect their physical sample name and location in the auto sampler. Verify that all parameters match in the sequence table, especially physical location of samples and the correct option of trays before starting the run. Add the sequence to the queue Select Ready Check. If there are no errors and eluent volume is sufficient, select Start. It is always good to stay until the first sample injection is completed. Monitor the chromatogram and other instrument parameters through the console for the duration of the run. If the system is running often, it is okay to leave the system turned on. In the Q tab, navigate to After Running the Sequence and select Run Smart Standby. This will turn off the column oven and lower the flow, but will otherwise keep the instrument on and running. To equilibrate the system using Smart Shutdown, select Smart Shutdown on the instrument toolbar of the console. Follow the instruction prompts and select OK after each step. Turn off the main power to all units using the on-off switch. To process data using Chameleon 7, Go to the Console and Data tab. Locate the desired sequence, open the studio, and it will bring you to an overview of the injection list. After that, select the Data Processing tab to view the chromatograms. Using the Previous and Next buttons in the Navigation tab, you can swap between injections. You can also swap between channels of data by using the Previous and Next buttons. Select the injection and channel you want to evaluate. To begin peak detection, set your detection parameters using the Cobra Wizard. Follow the prompts to define integration range, baseline to noise range, Cobra smoothing width, and minimum area of detection. You can then integrate unresolved peaks using Smart Peaks. Select Smart Peaks and then select the area in the chromatogram containing unresolved peaks. Finally, select the integration that is needed. You can modify detection parameters by selecting the Detection Parameters tab. To move a detection parameter, simply grab the parameter tag or line and drag it to the desired location. To edit a parameter, double-click on the tab and edit the value. For peak identification, navigate to the Data Processing tab and under the Chromatogram Tools, 
select the Peak Windows option. Select the Component Table Wizard and follow the prompts to identify the time range and peak filtering. You can enter component names in the table at the review stage or add them individually. You can assign individual peaks by selecting Add Component and drawing a rectangle around the peak you wish to add to the component table. Double click the peak window and edit the component name. Finally, you can update the retention times by clicking and dragging the peak window on the chromatogram. Grab one of the delimiters to extend or narrow the peak window. To define calibration standards, click on the injection list and name all calibration standards as necessary. For each calibration standard, click Level and assign or create a new level. Next, navigate back to the Data Processing tab and select Calibration and PM. In the Component table, update the table to reflect all calibration standards, and in the Calibration Level column, update all concentrations. To create a report template for the data, navigate to Create and select Report Template. Select the desired predefined template and then select Next. Enter a report template name and file location and select Finish. If you are in the Studio Viewer, you can create a report template using the tab on the bottom left-hand side of the screen. Insert columns by right-clicking on the report and selecting Insert Column. You can then select and edit the formula and component you want to add to the report. When the report is complete, select the chromelion icon in the top left and navigate to Export. Save the report according to the file type and location you want.